There's a new Batman movie coming out in March featuring the Riddler, a villain who's been transformed from the cartoony character of the past into a creepy serial killer based directly on the Zodiac Killer. He even has a cipher. What does it say? Let's take a look at some of the similarities between the movie and Zodiac. Also, a lot of connections between Batman and Zodiac have turned up over the years. So let's go into the rabbit hole. Or Batcave, rather. In August of 2020, a teaser trailer was released for a new Batman movie. It features a new version of the Riddler character, and people immediately recognized how much he resembles the Zodiac Killer. His costume is very similar to what the Zodiac was wearing at the Lake Berryessa attack. In the car attack in the trailer, you can see the Riddler's writing on the side of the car. It brings to mind the Zodiac's writing on the car door at the Lake Berryessa attack. The Riddler has a line that resembles part of Zodiac's 13-hole punch card. What is the price for your blind eye? Riddler's card says, From your secret friend. Which is very similar to Zodiac's Halloween card, which says, From your secret pal. I feel it in my bones, you ache to know my name, and so I'll clue you in. But then why spoil the game? Happy Halloween. Inside the Riddler's card is a cipher, one of Zodiac's hallmarks. Promotional art for the movie shows the Riddler with a crosshair symbol similar to Zodiac's. The symbol on his costume also resembles Zodiac's crosshairs. More trailers have come out with additional scenes of Riddler and his creepy clues. Bits of Riddler's cipher and writing also appear in some other promotional material. The Zodiac vibe for the movie is not accidental, According to the movie's director, Matt Reeves. In the case of the Riddler, I was inspired by, and like the Zodiac, who's a very famous serial, a serial killer here who was never captured. And he would communicate through, frankly, through ciphers and riddles. The Zodiac case itself has an unusual connection to the Riddler. In the FBI Zodiac case files, there's a document examination request for suspicious slips of paper found at a Marine base in November of 1969. The slips of paper said, Gunny Kramer, this is the Zodiac. And... Dear Jim, here I am again. The Zodiac and the Riddler. The FBI files go on to say they couldn't establish any links between those notes and the Zodiac case. I wonder what those notes say. Let's take another look at the Riddler's cipher from the new movie. Inside the card is a riddle. What does a liar do when he's dead? Then there's a series of cryptic symbols. After the trailer came out, it didn't take long for fans to solve the cipher. Andrew Lane solved it and tweeted his thought process. First, he plugged Batman into the first part, since Riddler might mention Batman directly. But it makes the second part look like this, which doesn't make much sense. So Lane noticed these repeating symbols in the first part and guessed they might stand for E, since it is the most used letter in English. Then he looked at these repeating symbols. They repeat consecutively in the second part. So he guessed they stand for L, since LL is the most frequent doubled letter pattern in English, showing up in very many words. Then using the riddle as a clue and some trial and error, he figured out the rest of the substitutions, which give the final answer. He lies still. Another solution was given on Twitter by Mike Selinker. He used a similar trial and error approach, working through some possibilities that fit the repeating patterns in the cipher until arriving at the same answer. He lies still. Since the cipher is so short, I tried to see if other solutions fit and came up with these. There are a lot of them. They all fit the Riddler cipher text, but most of them don't make sense when compared to the clue. None of them seem better than, he lies still. Can we use code-breaking tools to solve this short cipher? First, we need to transcribe the symbols. Let's replace the weird symbols with normal letters like this. So now we have a cipher text we can use in code-breaking software. Let's try Edwin Olson's online cryptogram solver. 
If we add the missing word break to the ciphertext, the solver gets the correct answer right away. But without knowing the solution ahead of time, we wouldn't know that there was a word break there. Without it, this solver still gets close. Belize still appears among the answers. The solver has a mode called Patristocrat, where it can try to guess where word breaks appear. But it doesn't settle on a good solution this way. Johan Allen's site, boxandtrick.com, has a cryptogram solver. The closest match it gets without knowing about the missing word break is Belize still. When we add the missing word break, the right answer appears. Tyler Aiken's solver at rumkin.com has a similar result. The solver gets close with belies still and relies still. If we cheat again and add the missing word break, we get a huge pile of results, but he lies still appears far down the list since the results aren't really sorted by quality. Cryptool 2 is an open source cryptography tool that has a lot of code breaking abilities. When we put the word breaks in the right places, it's able to discover the correct solution among some other incorrect ones. Be sure to check out Niels Kopel's YouTube channel, Cryptography for Everybody, for his excellent videos about Cryptool 2. We didn't really need the code breaking tools to break this code, but I thought it was interesting to see if they could. Short ciphers can be challenging for the automatic solvers depending on what techniques they use. They usually perform much better with longer ciphers because they have more information to work with. The Riddler's cipher is pretty short, but I think we can be satisfied that he lies still is correct because combined with the riddle clue, it makes sense since it's using the double meaning of lies, as in the liar is lying down because he's dead, but he lies because he's a liar. And as it turns out, this riddle has a long history, which seems to further confirm the answer. The riddle appears in this 1993 newspaper. Will shooting a fibber make him stop lying? Nope. In death, he lies still. In 1991, it was also the answer to the popular jumble word puzzle. What they say about the habitual liar when he passed away? He lies still. In 1988, it appeared in an article about gravestones, where one is purported to say, Beneath this smooth stone by the bone of his bone, sleeps Master John Gill. By lies, when alive, this attorney did thrive, and now that he's dead, he lies still. Turns out the epitaph theme goes way back. Here's one from 106 years ago, in a New Jersey newspaper. He was an awful liar, a genius was our Bill, and now that he's gone higher, we know that he lies still. We can even find the same pun being used in 1827, almost 200 years ago. It appeared in The Kaleidoscope, a magazine published in England. Epitaph, intended for a notorious defamer and liar when he shall depart his life. Beneath this stone here lies his head, who, living, lied to get his bread. The force of habit, let those doubt who will. Alive, the knave lied, and dead he lies still. The riddle's long history further confirms the cipher solution, he lies still, despite the existence of other plaintexts that fit. Maybe we'll come across plaintexts for Zodiac's 13 and 32 character ciphers one day that feel just as right. Be sure to check out episode 11 for more details about those two ciphers. More recently, another cipher from the new Riddler appeared on a standee poster advertisement at a movie theater. The same cipher appears in a more recent trailer for the movie. It didn't take long for fans to crack that one either. If you want to crack it yourself, pause the video now or skip ahead a bit to avoid spoilers. Applying the key from the first cipher gives this partial solution. Fans quickly decoded the rest. And the message says, You are El Rada Alada. Which translates to, you are the winged rat. Turns out if you go to rataalada.com, there are more puzzles to solve. If you answer the riddles correctly, you can get some promotional art as a reward. 
And in the website address for the picture, there's a series of numbers that decodes to the beginning of another message. Another reward from the site is this additional cipher. I won't give the answer to that one, it's pretty easy to solve. The cipher resembles Zodiac's signature crosshair symbol, and the Paradise Slaves crossword written in the Halloween card, and also the Sorry No Cipher message Zodiac wrote inside the Halloween card's envelope. These little easter eggs and games go a long way to generate interest for the upcoming Batman movie. The new Batman movie is inspired by the real-life Zodiac killer, but the connections between Batman and Zodiac go deeper and have been explored for decades by web sleuths. I dug around and found some new stuff, too. Here are some examples. I'll put links to the sources and more information in the video description. In 1964, a villain called the Zodiac Master appeared in a Batman story in Detective Comics, better known today as DC Comics. He wore a costume covered in astrological symbols and has a Z on the forehead of his mask. Mr. Z! Gosh, Z couldn't stand for Zodiac, could it, Batman? There's even mention of a Zodiac map. Hmm, a Zodiac map and a slip of paper. It brings to mind the map that the real Zodiac sent with his bus bomb cipher. The bejeweled golden bull the Zodiac Master steals has a gem on it that sort of looks like the Zodiac's crosshair symbol. This Zodiac Master villain has had more recent incarnations, such as in the Lego Batman movie, and in an animated Batman TV series, a version of him also turned up in a Batgirl comic book series. Dr. Zodiac was another astrology-inspired villain, appearing in a Batman and Superman comic in 1966. In that story, he uses a book of horoscopes to commit spectacular crimes. He even sends taunting letters signed Dr. Zodiac. Batman, I will commit a one million dollar robbery in Gotham Central Park tomorrow afternoon. <laughs> Try and stop me, Dr. Zodiac. In later stories, he became romantically involved with another villain called Madame Zodiac. A different Madame Zodiac turned up in a Marvel comic from 1955. Apparently, there's a long history of astrology influencing Batman comics. Here's a comic from 1957. Another astrology-themed villain, the Signal Man, taunts Batman with a letter, challenging him to thwart his upcoming robbery. He wears a costume festooned with signs of the Zodiac. Batman, I'm challenging you to a battle of wits. See if you can follow the signs to my robbery tonight. And stop me if you can, <laughs> the Signal Man. Like the real Zodiac, he seems to enjoy front page coverage in the newspapers. I made the front pages. Maybe I didn't get that necklace, but I did get more headlines. P.S. Could you print this new cipher on your front page? I want you to print this cipher on the front page of your paper. I was not happy to see that I did not get front page coverage. The Zodiac themed villain also leaves familiar signs as clues. A fir tree and two astronomical signs. And the astronomical symbols represent Earth and Mars. And he sets a bomb to blow up our heroes. In exactly 10 minutes, a bomb will explode in the engine room. The real Zodiac also wrote about bomb plans. The bomb can be adapted to new conditions. The new bomb is set up like this. I hope you enjoy yourselves when I have my blast. Tell everyone about the bus bomb with all the details. But wait, there's another Zodiac-themed villain. In a 1961 comic, Batman and Robin fight a sorcerer that can make Zodiac symbols come to life. Symbols of the Zodiac, come forth, destroy them. Astrological influences also spread to the Batman television show that aired in the 1960s. In January 1967, there was an episode called The Zodiac Crimes, where the Joker plots to commit 12 crimes based on the signs of the Zodiac. Astrology, the science of the stars, this is the first of the Zodiac Crimes. Look for 11 more, and don't forget to keep score! <laughs> the real Zodiac kept score, too. He listed his attacks on the car door at Lake Berryessa, then started counting victims in his letters. may be planning a crime for each sign of the Zodiac. This is Batman speaking. 
When Batman says, this is Batman speaking, it reminds me of all the times Zodiac said, This is the Zodiac speaking. So many of his letters started out that way. And dead or alive, you're too late to stop the next theft of my criminal Zodiac. <laughs> oh, Pengy, then I really need your help. To do what? To terminate Batman once and for all, while I conclude my Zodiac crimes. The Joker in the Batman TV series was played by actor Cesar Romero, who also played a character in the Zorro TV series. Zorro, who makes the sign of the sea. Zorro, Zorro. And back in 1939, he played a magician named Radini in the movie Charlie Chan at Treasure Island. You are a magician named Radini. Many people have speculated that this movie might have inspired the real Zodiac Killer because of some interesting parallels with the case. It features a villain called Dr. Zodiac who leaves a threatening note. Look, Pop, the radiogram was on the floor. Sign of Scorpio indicates disaster if Zodiac obligations ignored. Unsigned. Zodiac? Can't escape Zodiac. Goodbye, my love. Paul. The story takes place in San Francisco and features a reporter from the San Francisco Chronicle. It certainly is a privilege, Dr. Zodiac. I'm Pete Lewis of the Chronicle. Dr. Zodiac is native of San Francisco. Dr. Zodiac is a native of the universe. He knows all things about all people. Together with Charlie Chan, the Chronicle reporter and the San Francisco Police Department investigate the crimes of Dr. Zodiac. Deputy Chief Kilbane of the San Francisco Police Department. And so far, no one's collected, not even the great Dr. Zodiac. Zodiac? Dr. Zodiac, the eye of Allah Mata. Mr. Chen, I am honored. Dr. Zodiac, man of great ego enjoys using power to dominate lives of others. Criminal egotists find pleasure in laughing at police. Is Dr. Zodiac in the house? Dr. Zodiac, I believe. Spotlight. It's later revealed that Rodini is Dr. Zodiac. It's filled with evil, with thoughts of murder. It's Dr. Zodiac. He's ready to strike again. Ah! Right, right. It's Rodini, otherwise known as Dr. Zodiac. Nearly 30 years later, Cesar Romero, who played Rodini, starred as the Joker and committed his Zodiac crimes. A year and a half after that episode aired, the real Zodiac began his campaign of crimes. Did Zodiac get his ideas from that old movie or the TV show, or is it just a big coincidence? Batman wasn't the only comic book superhero plagued by Zodiac-themed villains. Even your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man was faced with Mr. Zodiac, a villain who could transform into all the Zodiac signs. Back in 1945, Superman fought the Battle of the Zodiac with an evil astrologer. Evil astrologers seemed to come up all over the place. An issue of Detective Comics in 1954 had a Roy Raymond TV detective story featuring a scamming astrologer. How would you like me to read your fate in the Zodiac? A 1970 comic has the Avengers fighting an entire gang called Zodiac. I'm back in Zodiac's good graces again. Their stories feature a powerful artifact called the Zodiac Key. Return the Zodiac Key to me. I hold the key to the Zodiac. That makes me think of the two Zodiac cipher keys that have been found so far. One of the Zodiac gang members, Aquarius, was even based in San Francisco. Zodiac and astrology seemed to be everywhere in comics back then. I guess there truly are no original ideas. Makes you wonder, did the real-life Zodiac killer get his inspiration from these kinds of comic book characters?
He really did seem to be creating a kind of supervillain persona in his letter writing campaign. Ciphers, bomb plans, threatening school children, extorting the newspapers, bragging about the details of his crimes, leaving clues, and so on. He took the name Zodiac, but aside from a few astrological symbols in his ciphers, he didn't seem to emphasize astrology that much. Astrology itself has always been popular. You can really see that in the old comics, not just in the astrology-themed characters, but also stuff sold in the advertisements, such as Zodiac rings and pendants, Zodiac social security plates, Zodiac decals, Zodiac-specific catalogs, Zodiac stamps, Zodiac blacklight posters, and Zodiac necklaces. For some reason, these are called slave hoop necklaces. That stood out to me because Zodiac often wrote about his collecting of slaves. But what is a slave hoop necklace? Someone please tell me, because I couldn't find any information about that. Clearly, it's hard to escape the influence of astrology in popular culture. We found many Zodiac-themed characters from the old comics. But there are more specific comparisons we can make with elements of the real Zodiac Killer case. In a 1942 Batman comic, the Joker poisons some cigars. Yes! They contain ammonium nitrate. Heated, it forms laughing gas! <laughs> In the Zodiac Killer's letter from November 9th, 1969, he describes his detailed bomb plans and includes ammonium nitrate in the recipe. Take one bag of ammonium nitrate fertilizer. Science kits were popular back then. This advertisement shows a lot of scientific gear for sale, including a photoelectric relay, an electronic switch that is sensitive to light. This too is mentioned in Zodiac's bomb designs. One photoelectric switch. In his letters, Zodiac refers to his bomb as his death machine. The death machine is already made. The villain in this old comic also has a death machine. So that's their death weapon? The fighting men knock over the death machine. A few old comics mention the word crackproof. Don't you know this joint is crackproof? Ayo! It ain't crackproof! The real Zodiac boasted on this card. I'm crack proof. And in this letter, like I have always said, I am crack proof. In this 1953 Batman comic, there's an article called Fingerprint Forgeries. It's about how criminals have tried to fake fingerprints to fool the police, or to remove their own fingerprints somehow. It says one criminal made gloves and glued fake prints to the fingers. Zodiac mentioned a similar technique in one of his letters. I have left no fingerprints behind me. I wear transparent fingertip guards. Two coats of airplane cement coated on my fingertips. Quite unnoticeable and very effective. Maybe he developed that technique based on ideas from the comics, but there are other references to it. This 1961 newspaper reported on a gang of robbers who were caught after they robbed a supermarket. Police found a car used by the gang and discovered pieces of model airplane cement used to cover fingerprints to prevent leaving fingerprints. Clever, but not clever enough, since police did end up finding a fingerprint on the bits of glue. Zodiac liked to start out his letters by saying, This is the Zodiac speaking. That sort of phrase comes up a lot in the old comics. The good guys and gals say it. This is Batman speaking. This is the Batman talking. This is Vicky Vale speaking. This is the Flash speaking. And the bad guys say it too. This is the authority speaking. This is a Zero speaking. Besides his name also starting with Z, Zero wears a mask, bringing to mind the one worn by Zodiac at Lake Berryessa. In October 1969, Zodiac attacked and killed a cab driver. Batman is shown attacking a cab driver in this comic from 1939. Help! The devil himself! In this story, our heroes are investigating clues in the form of ranch branding symbols. They bring to mind the strange symbol from Zodiac's Halloween card, and speculation that it's connected to cattle branding of some kind. Zodiac's iconic signature is the crosshair symbol. It appears all over his letters and ciphers. It's not surprising that we can find similar symbols in old comics, like in ads for BB guns, 
and a toy rocket ship with a bomb site that looks pretty close to Zodiac's symbol. But a closer resemblance to the real Zodiac is this Batman story from 1964. The villain paralyzes our heroes by first branding them with a crosshair symbol. An encircled X on the forehead of my mask, glowing like cold fire. Robin, the same sign is appearing on your forehead. This is yet another reminder of Zodiac's Lake Berryessa costume. And, big surprise, we can find another villain whose costume reminds us of Zodiac's. Back in 1939, Batman faced the Monk. Instead of a crosshairs, he had a skull and crossbones on his costume and on his hood. When we look for something specific like this, it sure does seem to turn up everywhere. The card Zodiac mailed his 340 cipher in has a dripping pen on the front and says, Sorry I haven't written, but I just washed my pen, and I can't do a thing with it. A 1954 Batman comic shows the Joker taking over Batman and using a giant dripping pen to aid a robbery. Some of the greeting cards knocked down in this TV show episode are made by Jolly Roger. The same brand as the dragon card from Zodiac. There's also a scene with Greek letters on the chalkboard. Gosh, Bruce, Greek is still Greek to me. It's Greek to a lot of Greeks, too. <laughs> Some of them match symbols Zodiac used in his ciphers. That's the puzzle. Z is the most enigmatic letter in the alphabet, old chum. Think of the words that begin with Z. Zigzag, zither, Zodiac. In his letters, Zodiac makes many references to the Mikado, the comic opera by Gilbert and Sullivan. His letter from July 26, 1970, paraphrases the Little List song from the opera, sung by the character Coco, the Lord High Executioner. As someday it may happen that a victim must be found, I've got a little list, I've got a little list of society offenders who might well be underground and who never would be missed, who never would be missed. Some Zodiac researchers believe Zodiac's version of the lyrics more closely matches the version of the song performed by Groucho Marx. And that singular anomaly, the girl who's never kissed, I don't think she'd be missed. I'm sure she'd not be missed. Nearly four years later, Zodiac sent a letter where he references the Exorcist movie. I saw and think the Exorcist was the best satirical comedy that I have ever seen. He includes another excerpt from the Mikado, this time from the song Tit Willow. Then he plunged himself into the billowy wave, and an echo arose from the suicide's grave. In the 1960s Batman TV show, The Penguin sings a different version of that song. The villain from a different episode sings a song to the tune of another Mikado song, A Wandering Minstrel. A helpful minstrel I, when I see folks in trouble, then I come on a double, with counsel both soothing and wise, with counsel both soothing and wise. Why did Zodiac reference the Mikado so much in his letters? What was his connection to it? Was he involved in musical theater? Or was he just a fan? There's been so much speculation around this topic. Here's another unusual Batman connection to Zodiac. The Zodiac brand of wristwatches have been noted for their name and for using the same crosshair symbol. Their Olympos model, available in the early 1960s, has been nicknamed the Batman Watch or Bat Watch because it resembles Batman's mask. After seeing all of these comic book references, it makes you wonder, was the real Zodiac Killer building his villainous persona the same way a writer conjures up stories for these old comic books? Many others noticed some of these connections and speculate that Zodiac may have been inspired by things he picked up from the popular culture in his day, such as comic books, detective stories, films, and other entertainment. Or maybe these are all just meaningless coincidences. 
After all, if you look at anything long enough, you'll find all sorts of connections. You've lost your mind. You've lost your damn mind, Charlie. Those old comic books and detective stories also have deep connections with cryptography. Here's a comic from 1952 where Batman and Robin fight a villain called Mr. Cypher. But only his name is interesting, he doesn't really do any crypto. But a story from 1959 features a cryptogram contest. Someone wins the cash prize, which the Joker tries to steal. In this story, the Joker sends addresses to criminals by encrypting them in classified ads. The Joker set code books. Those box numbers are in code. Morse code, invented by Samuel Morse back in 1837, is a way to transmit information using only short and long pulses. It turns up a lot in Batman comics. Here's Batman tapping in Morse code to communicate. Here, he uses it to send messages to Robin while underwater. Messaging the police while tapping an electrical wire. Here's a unique way to send Morse code by hitting a punching bag. In this comic, a Morse code message is hidden in the hair of a girl on a tattoo. It decodes to a message that has to be read backwards. Here's Batman using puffs of steam like smoke signals to send a message to Robin. And here's a story where a recording of laughter turns out to be a secret message in Morse code. Morse code also turns up in the 60s TV show. Morse bat code? In the Super Friends cartoon, Batman and Robin communicate using bat code, which looks like Morse code using lights. It's a good thing Wendy and Marvin know our bat code. Climb down mountain, meet us at Batcopter. Acknowledge. Another episode features a variant of Morse code used by the Junior Justice League to encode a location. It's the secret signal code of the Justice League. This is a message from Superman. What does it say? L-O-N. Longitude. He's giving us his location. Here are some ads from 1967 for Saturday morning cartoons with a new special feature. Don't miss this chance to decode secret message. First time ever on TV. And they even decoded literal alphabet soup in an episode of Batman. I guess I'm tired but it looks like a bowl of alphabet soup. Robin, have you noticed the J's, Q's, and Z's are missing? Holy uncanny photographic mental processes! No doubt she contrived to leave a message. In the soup? You mean you're gonna feed those letters to the bat computer? You did it! It's a very silly example of cryptography, but while trying to break codes, I often feel like I'm staring at alphabet soup. Some people wonder if Zodiac got some of his cipher symbols from hobo signs. These unusual symbols were left by migrant workers to give others important information, without drawing too much attention. This Batman and Robin story from 1963 features them discovering and deciphering hobo signs. Some hobo signs look like Zodiac symbols. This one looks just like Zodiac's signature. As a hobo symbol, it reportedly means, people here are rude and do not give. Part of Zodiac's weird symbol from the Halloween card looks like a hobo code for Here live friendly people, at least according to the Encyclopedia of Western Signs and Ideograms. Cryptography storylines were popular in other comics besides Batman. Here are some from Wonder Woman comics in the early 1940s. In this story, a character uses invisible ink to hide a code key on her leg. This one features a stolen code key used to decrypt a message. In this strip, a kernel dictates in some kind of code that sounds like nonsense words. Another Golden Age comic book hero, Green Llama, features some cryptography. Here, he receives and decodes a cryptogram. Back in 1953, there was an issue of World's Finest Comics, which had an interesting story called The Australian Code Mystery. It was about a code expert who goes to Australia to investigate someone stealing and transmitting secrets from a military base. The transmissions are recordings, sped up many times to sound like gibberish. After slowing them down, they just sound like music, a girl singing, and a violin playing. But the code expert uses frequency analysis to unlock the secret messages hidden in the music. 
The notes of the girls singing decrypt as decoy messages, while the violin's notes decode as the real secret messages. Back in the 60s, there were promotional tie-ins with the Batman TV show. The Winn-Dixie grocery store had a contest where you could win money. If you brought your cartoon card to the Batman decoder at the store, you could see what you might have won. Some stores, like Loblaws, who ran the same contest, also gave away free Batman code cards, which featured a simple substitution key used for secret messages in the Batman fan club. Kids could send away for memberships in the Batman fan club to get goodies like the code card, pins, and badges. One of the comic book series Batman appeared in was called All-Star Comics, which was first published back in 1940. It was famous for introducing Wonder Woman for the first time in 1942. The series featured the first superhero team called the Justice Society of America, and it had a fan club called the Junior Justice Society of America. Kids could send away for a membership, which would come with goodies like a letter, badge, decoder wheel, comic book, and a membership certificate. The decoder wheel works as a key for substitution ciphers. Plain text letters are printed on the outer ring. Cipher symbols are printed on the inner ring. There's a superhero associated with each key. Hawkman, Sandman, Dr. Midnight, Starman, Adam, Spectre, Dr. Fate, Johnny Thunder, Wonder Woman, Superman, The Flash, Green Lantern, and of course, Batman. Turning the wheels rotates different heroes into the window on the back. So the wheels will line up differently based on which hero you pick. Thus, each hero has their own code, or substitution key. The cipher symbols are made up of a Greek alphabet and two astrological symbols. The symbols are pretty interesting because Zodiac uses a lot of them too. Many secret messages using those symbols were published in the comics, and fan club members who received the decoder wheels could unlock the messages. The fan club had a two-year hiatus but came back in 1947, announced with ads like this, where kids could send away from memberships and get a new secret code chart. The new code chart uses numerical ciphers instead of the symbolic ones used before. Each column is a different substitution key related to a superhero. Many secret codes created with those keys appeared in the comics. So a club member armed with their decoder card could quickly unlock the messages by looking up the key based on the superhero. And sometimes the stories would break the fourth wall and mention readers sending in messages using the numerical codes. This letter from a Junior Justice Society member reached us today through the editor of All-Star Comics. It's in the Green Lantern Code and may have a bearing on this case. Other heroes also had fan clubs with secret codes. The superhero Green Llama often appeared with secret messages for members. Encrypted messages also appeared in old Spider-Man comics in the bulletins section. Kids were excited to get secret messages in comic books. It made them feel more connected to their favorite heroes. The excitement of opening a newly published comic book to a page with mysterious symbols that only they could decode. Revealing the message felt like unearthing a treasure. Those moments are captured brilliantly in the movie A Christmas Story. Hey, Master Ralph Parker, my Dakota fan! Ralph Parker is hereby appointed a member of the Little Orphan Annie Secret Circle and is entitled to all the honors and benefits occurring there, too. Now it's time for Annie's secret message. Remember, kids, only members of Annie's secret circle can decode Annie's secret message. Aha, B! <laughs> I went to the next. The first word is B. S. It was coming easier now. Be sure to drink your Ovaltine. Ovaltine? A crummy commercial? Son of a bitch. Those fan clubs really showed how popular cryptography toys were in those days. Here are some other examples I found. This is a secret decoder from 1966, during the popularity of the Batman TV show. It was used to decode secret messages, like these riddles from the Riddler. They are simple grill ciphers. Here's how it works. This puzzle asks, Why does Batman drive to the Batcave? You line up the decoder card on top. Then the answer peeks through the squares. It's too far to walk! <laughs> Many ads for Silly Putty promoted its crude ability to make secret codes, since it could make mirrored impressions of a message. Here's a small ad for a secret agent code book for reading and writing secret messages. I couldn't find any more info about it. I wonder if anyone can dig up a copy of the code book. 
Here's a similar ad for a secret code you could mail order. The ad calls it unbreakable. Bazooka Bubblegum sold this secret code set, which came with a codograph, code machine, and invisible ink. Here's another ad with a similar codograph, claiming to have over a million code possibilities. Made by the Arm Company of Chicago, Illinois, it looks like a simple decoder wheel that can set up a variety of substitution cipher keys. Looks like you can use it to decode Morse code as well, since dots and dashes are printed with the letters and numbers. Here's an ad from Popsicle, showing rewards kids could earn by saving up ice cream bags and mailing them in. One of the rewards was a Junior G-Man secret code kit. Instead of the usual code wheel, it was a slide rule. This Dick Tracy slide rule looks very similar. Basically, you can create substitution keys by sliding an inner piece of wood to line up the plain and cipher alphabets you want. Popsicle also sold an interesting toy called the Cowboy Boot Ring. It was a little plastic cowboy boot-shaped ring that came with a magnifying glass, compass, a brand that can be used as a stamp, a hidden chamber, and a secret code sheet. The code sheet is interesting because it was a substitution code that used symbols instead of letters. And some of the symbols resemble Zodiac's ciphers, including the iconic crosshairs or crossed circle symbol. Another similar cowboy-themed substitution code appeared in Francis Keene's Secret Code Book for Boys and Girls, published in 1950. The so-called cowboy code has some symbols that also resemble Zodiac's cipher symbols. Be sure to check out Richard Brisson's site, which has an interesting collection of vintage crypto toys. The link's in the video description. Secret codes and code breaking were such popular topics in those wartime and post-wartime days. So popular, in fact, that sometimes entire articles about secret codes were included in comic books. This issue of Detective Comics from 1948 has an article called Secret Codes Can Be Fun, written by Henry Lysing. It describes the tic-tac-toe code, or pig pen cipher, hiding messages using Native American language, the rail fence transposition cipher, and invisible inks. The next issue had another Secret Codes article by Lysing, this time about hiding messages in plain sight, known as steganography. A few issues later, another Henry Lysing article appeared called Secret Codes Are All Around You. It described Pig Latin, secret information in price tags, and shorthand code. Henry Lysing was also known for publishing a book in 1936 called Secret Writing. The book contains descriptions for an interesting variety of codes and ciphers. Henry Lysing was the pen name of a crime story writer and editor named John L. Nanovic. This article calls him an expert on codes and cryptograms, and he says, I'm just a Palmerton boy who made cryptograms, ciphers, and codes while other Southbenders capitalized on in runs and line plunges. He's also known for co-creating Doc Savage, a famous hero character from the pulp magazines in the 1930s and 40s. A 1952 issue of Detective Comics contained an article, the most mysterious book in the world, about the famous undeciphered book, the Voynich Manuscript. The 600-year-old book features many mysterious and fantastical drawings, and is filled with a writing system that hasn't yet been decoded. The comic book article was written by David Kahn, best known for his comprehensive book about crypto history, called The Codebreakers. Yet another article about secret codes appeared a few issues later. This one was written by Bob Lanza, a writer I can't find much info about. Maybe Bob Lanza is just someone's pen name, like Henry Lysing was a pen name for John Nanovic. Lanza's article is a brief summary of the interesting uses of various codes and ciphers in history. Similar crypto articles often appeared in Pulp Fiction magazines. A great example is the magazine Flynn's Weekly Detective Fiction, which started in 1924 and ran for almost 30 years. For a while, the magazine featured a very popular series of crypto columns written by Merle E. O'Haver. The articles focused on the art of making and breaking codes. His column grew so popular that it led to the formation of the American Cryptogram Association in 1930. John Tobis manages a fantastic, comprehensive collection of O'Haver's articles on his website, covering so many different types of ciphers. Be sure to check it out. Use the link in the video description. There were so many interesting codes and ciphers in those old comic books and detective stories. Maybe Zodiac learned about them there, and used that knowledge to make his own ciphers more complicated and difficult to solve. 
Elements related to the Zodiac Killer have appeared in comic books and stories predating his crime spree. Was he inspired by those stories? Now we have storytellers like the ones making the new Batman film adapting the real-life Zodiac Killer story back into theirs. It's strange to think that those stories might have inspired a serial killer who later inspired more of the same kinds of stories. Maybe if the Zodiac case is ever solved, we'll get a glimpse into what truly motivated him. Until then, we can only speculate and tell even more stories. As Oscar Wilde said, Life imitates art. Far more than art imitates life. <laughs>